Today we're gonna look at how to create this animating mask effect using the puppet tool all within After Effects. And if you like this video, go ahead and like it because that is the point of the like button. Also make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything with this new and involving channel known as D-Man Films. Let's break it down. So in After Effects, we have our clip right here in our composition of a man with a mask on. Surprisingly, that is not his actual face. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a 3D track of our clip, but only of our man's face uh, slash mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our clip and we are going to come up here to the ellipse tool and then create an ellipse mask around our dude. And then with our clip, select M to bring up the mask and select the stopwatch for mask path. And now we're going to keyframe the mask along the clip to keep our dude's face within the middle of our ellipse that we've created. And once you're done with that, you should have something like this. Now right mouse click on your clip Click pre-compose and make sure you move all attributes to the new composition. Hit OK. And with our new comp selected, we are going to go to our tracking menu and click track camera. And let After Effects do its uh, duties. And when it's finished, you'll see that we have all these track points along our subject's face, which is great. And now we just want to get rid of the mask that we created. So if we double click on our layer to open up the original clip, we can select it. Hit M to bring up the mask and change it from add to none to then turn off the mask. And if we go back to the new comp, we can see that our mask is gone. However, our track points are still only on our subject's face. Score! Next thing we wanna do is we wanna find a good frame with a good amount of track points to grab from. This looks good right here. I'm going to click and hold and draw a circle around all of them just to get everything we can get. Right mouse click and click create solid and camera. And you can see the software has now created a lime green square tracking with our subject's face. And we will get back to that square in a bit. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to create the animation of our mask that we're working with. So what we can do is we can take the original clip of our subject and put it into a new composition, scrub through our clip to find a nice frame of the mask, which I believe is right here can right mouse click go to time and then freeze frame next we're going to create a mask around our mask <sighs> mask is going to be used too much in this tutorial i already know it with the mask complete hit Control alt home that's going to bring the anchor point to the center of our mask now let's rotate our mask to make it more level with the ground and let's just bring it center frame. So the next thing we're gonna do with our mask is create this blinking effect that you see within it. So what we can do is we can control D to duplicate our layer and then hit M on that duplicated layer and delete the mask. And now take this shot right here and just scale it up. And now let's bring the opacity down. With this shot, we're going to use a little bit of this cheek texture right here as the eyelid. So if we bring the opacity down, we can see where the cheek is and where the eye is underneath. We can just adjust it, rotate it a little bit maybe, then bring the opacity all the way down on that layer. Make sure the layer is selected. Click your mask tool and now create a mask around the eyeball right here. Bring the opacity back up on our shot and you can see we have one closed eye. He's winking at us, isn't that sweet? And we can do the same thing for the second eye. And there's the eyelid for the second eye. And quick reminder, if you want to adjust the texture of the part of the frame that you're using for this eyelid, we can always go up to the anchor point tool, click that, and if you select it, you can see we can move the image underneath the mask without affecting the mask. So the next thing with this right eye right here, we want to create a little square shaped mask above it with the bottom being slightly curved. With that mask, change it from add to intersect and hit M on the keyboard and click the stopwatch on the mask path to create a keyframe. With this first keyframe, we can drag the mask down. We're gonna have it start with it shut. So it just appears shut and then just opens up slowly and then go three to four frames ahead. Take the mask and just drag it up. Select the keyframes, right mouse click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And we can go to the end keyframe of that layer, hit alt bracket to end our clip there. And now let's just do the same thing with the left eye. And you can see we have this nice little blink effect right here. We can always take the two clips right here, control C, control V to copy and paste. And we can take it and drag it anywhere along the clip as well for wherever else we want our mask to blink. 
So next we want to select all these layers, right mouse click, pre-compose, let's name it mask linking. And now it is time to puppet tool the bonanzas out of our shot. So we wanna go up to our puppet tool right here, it looks like a little push pin. Well, that's what it is. And you can see if I click on the mask, it creates an anchor point that uh, moves the image. If I select a second one, I can move that one. And this first one, you can see is not moving. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a buttload of anchor points all around our mask subject right here. And what this is going to do is when we start animating the face to make it have expressions, it's going to keep it from distorting the edges of our mask. So once you're done with that, before we go on to make any more anchor points, a great organization tip is to go down to your layer right here, hit U, and you can see all of our puppet anchor points we have created right here. Let's rename them to uh, help keep everything organized. So if we right mouse click on the first one, hit rename, we can call it uh, face outline and then select the whole thing control C to copy and then go to the next layer and then just control V and then right mouse click rename next layer control V and then so on and so on with all of these anchor points so now we want to create the anchor points within our face so the first one we're gonna do is the eyebrows I think just one two three points right there and then one two three points right there Next, we wanna do the forehead right here. We can go right along the forehead, right above the eyebrows. And we're not gonna be moving the forehead, but what this does is, is when we start to adjust the eyebrows, it will allow the forehead to not be affected. Next, we can go around the eyes. We can just create a couple points right here. Next, we wanna hit the nose. And again, we won't be animating the nose, but it's going to keep the nose from being distorted from the other animations. And now the cheeks, we can go right along these cheekbones right here. And lastly, the lips, we can just go from the crease and now we have this plethora of anchor points to work with. So to go over the workflow of how to go about animating this face, we are going to just focus on the mouth. So let's say we wanna make the mouth smile, but we don't wanna make it smile right away, right when the clip starts, but we wanna make it smile, you know, a second, two seconds in. What we can do is, is we can open this up right here. We can see all the anchor points for our mouth right here and all the keyframes are right here at the beginning of our clip. We can drag them ahead in the timeline for whenever we want the animation to start. So right there, let's go with that and then just move a couple frames uh, forward as well. And now we can start animating our mouth. And let's say we just wanted to make a nice little smile. Once we're done with those adjustments, we can play through and see our creepy, janky smile. Very simple. That's how I smile when I see candy. And if you want to adjust the speeds, again, you can always go back to our keyframes right here, drag this forward, drag this back. And if you want him to go to a smile and then go back to where he originally was, we can always select the first keyframes, Control C, Control V, to duplicate all the keyframes, which leaves us with this nice little smile back to normal. And if we want him to hold that smile a little bit longer, we can copy and paste the middle set of keyframes and make them in the middle as well. Take these last keyframes, drag them out a little bit, leaving us with a nice little smile, hold, then rest. You can see in this process why the organization and the labeling of keyframes is so important. So we can just quickly go through grab the keyframes we want. And when we are done animating all of our anchor points for our puppet tool, we are left with this right here. Um, so it's all very... Uh... So the next thing we wanna do is we want to export the shot of our mask. We can go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue, and then hit Lossless, go to the format. Let's make it a QuickTime. Uh, go to make sure the format options are on animation. Go to the channels, select uh, from RGB, we wanna put RGB plus alpha. Next, click the render settings, click right here. You can see in the uh, use this frame rate, um, it's on 24, which is the natural frame rate that the shot was at. We wanna change it to 10, and that's gonna help give it more of this claymation effect at this 10 frames per second look. And then select where you want to export it to and then go ahead and export. So after it's export, you can bring it back into the After Effects software. Now you have this mask animation asset that is at 10 frames per second. And now all we need to do is apply it to that solid that we attract to our face that I said we'd get back to later. Well, it's later now. It's Now it's later. So if we go back to our composition where we had our main clip, we want to select our lime green square, right mouse click on that, hit pre-compose, and make sure we have this top option and selected, hit OK, and then double click on this layer. And we got our nice lime green shot right here. 
Now let's take our mask shot that we had just exported, drag it into this composition, scale up to be almost the size of the square that we're working with, turn off the solid underneath it, and now what you'll see is if we go to back to our main composition, that lime green square has been replaced with the mask that we have created. So to make adjustments, what we want to do first is we want to create another mask around this mask. <laughs> so we can soften up the edges of our face. So create the mask, hit F, feather it out pretty well. Next, if we go to our main composition, select the layer of our mask, and now we'll need to make adjustments as well here. So what we can do to make it easier is if we just turn down the opacity just slightly so we can see both eyes, we can see where the eyes need to match up so we can rotate, scale, and change the position just to get it right. And once you're done with that, we can always turn the layer off and turn it back on just to see how well it is, and I'm happy with that. So if we play through it, you can see that the track is working very, very well, and it looks great. So there's only two small little details left that we wanna do just to further the effect. And the first one is we can see if we turn off the mask that we created, the shot starts a little bit out of focus, just slightly, and then comes into focus as we progress forward. So if we right mouse click on the layer, go to effect, blur, camera lens blur. Let's make the blur radius 10 and then keyframe it and now move ahead in our shot right when things start to get in focus and bring it down to zero. Hit U to bring up our keyframe, select both of them and make it easy ease. And now we have this slight focus rack with our mask bringing out the realism even more. And for the final touch up, we'll be using a lens flare from Video Copilot's Optical Flares. And the reason we'll be using that is you can see we have this bloom in the background here. And when it's blooming, it's actually, if we turn off the mask layer, it's bleeding around our mask on location where we were filming. So if I turn the layer back on, you can see the effect that we've added is uh, clipping that bloom. So we'll want to right mouse click, new adjustment layer, then right mouse click on that adjustment layer go to our optical flares option, click options in our optical flares effect menu. We can go to preset browser and click the lights preset, scroll down to the, uh, the real sun preset. And in the optical flares, we have the ability to turn off all these different elements within this flare, except for this little bloom right here, which is what I wanna do. So we can just solo the bloom just like that. That looks good, we hit okay. And now with the uh, adjustment layer selected, change the blending mode to add. And now let's take the position of our flare, put it right on top of where that bloom was happening. So here we won't want the flare visible at all. So we take the brightness, put it all the way down to zero, select the stopwatch to create a keyframe, scrub through right there's when we want to start having the uh, bloom appear. So we can hit you, show our keyframes, come over here where the brightness is and add another keyframe and then move ahead until you see the full bloom in our shot and then change the brightness to 25. And lastly, we'll need to adjust the position of this flare because you can see as the camera moves, the flare does not move where it needs to move. So quick and easy solution to that. Select our main shot layer, go up to the tracker menu and click track motion. And we're going to put a tracking point around this bloom right over here. Just right in the white right there looks good and we're going to play through. And once your track is done, make sure we right mouse click in the composition, click new null, and we'll name this null to light bloom track. And in our tracker window, make sure we edit the target to be the light bloom track, hit okay, then hit apply, hit okay. And in our adjustment layer, which we have the optical flares effect on, hit the drop down menu, hit the effects drop down and then we'll see the optical flares right there. Once we drop that down, we'll see we can keyframe the position XY, which is referring to the actual position of the light bloom. And we can pick whip that to the position of the null. So if we select the null, hit P to see our position and then grab the pick whip tool of the optical flares position, drag to the position of the null, bada bing, bada boom. We now have this light bloom track perfectly in our shot and our shot is complete. We have this nice animated, it's creepy. I don't know if it's creepy or not. Uh, it, it's, uh, I mean, if I was walking alone, uh, I'd see that, that, yeah, that's, I'd be like, whoa, what are you? <laughs> hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. And if you want to go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything 
from this channel. As always, I'll see you in the next one.